Good morning, guys, gals, Denmark7643. I'm just uh, hanging out on my Saturday with my kiddos in the living room. They're having some breakfast, so there's a little background noise, pardon them. They're trying to be as quiet as possible for us today because I wanted to get out a video on Rebel Fighters. There's a lot of confusion about this particular team right now as to what is best and I've tried a bunch of things, and granted, my not all my Rebel Fighters are amazing, but there's some real interesting data on SWGOH.GG that's showing, like, the best defensive team is Lando and Biggs and uh, SRP and Hoth Rebel Scout right now. And I just wanted to just reach out and say that it's probably only that way because that's... Um, kind of an entry-level um, group of characters where a lot of people might have Biggs relic for a Rebel Fleet, and Lando needed to be relic up for the Jedi Knight Luke event. And so if you have those folks relic up, you're going to be sharing a lot of stats, and maybe a lot of people just tried to go in there with the thought that they could just underman it or whatever else, and so it got a bunch of defends. But really... Um, if you look at the teams there, there are a few of them that really work well to stop the the usual suspects. There's going to be, you know, trying to use like a solo nest or maybe a solo malik on it to try to be, you know, cute or whatever. And then there's, you know, the possibility that people are going to use Treya on it, thinking that all the out-of-turn attacks are going to just cripple the team. And there's a couple of variations of this Mon Mothma team that can stop both. And then... There's Jawas. Believe it or not, uh, Gear 12 Jawas just tear this team apart. Um, they're going to take some losses. You're not going to get a full banner win, but uh, they actually do a really great job up against Mon Mothma. So I just wanted to, to show you folks this. This is kind of the main thing with this team. Uh, everybody, all five members, share 8% of their max health, max protection, offense, defense, potency, and tenacity with the whole team. So you just add them all together and then take 8% of it and it gets shared throughout the whole team to each member. And they assist every time somebody does an ability. And if it's an attack ability, the assists don't deal hardly any damage at all. So the one person that does the attack ability deals plenty, but then the rest of the assists are just kind of, you get the effects of the basics basically and not a whole lot of damage. I mean, we're talking hundreds instead of thousands in some cases because 90% penalty is, is there. But if the skill is uh, a zero damage ability, deals no damage whatsoever, it's not considered an attack, then there is a 45% less damage penalty instead. So they're dealing 55% of their normal damage, which is pretty good if you think about it. Now you're getting everybody else attacking for 55%. So it behooves you to have characters on your team that have uh, abilities that deal zero damage. And so uh, it's pretty sweet because when you have those also, it dispels all debuffs on the healthiest rebel ally. And then Mon Mothma's basic dispels all debuffs on the weakest rebel ally. So when it gets to her turn, you're taking care of the healthiest and the weakest when it's on her turn. Healthiest with zero damage buffs yet dispelled, and then, or cleansed rather, and on her turn, the um, weakest enemy gets taken care of. So, pretty neat. And then you have this, where if you have tanks in your team, if she resurrects somebody, they're going to taunt and gain crit immunity. Attackers will assist on this move. And healers and supports will restore 15% health and protection. So you're going to get a couple of assists out of this move as well. It's pretty neat, really. And so this pet move is pretty great, too. Um, just basically brings out a pet. But I'll tell you this. In most of your fights, you're not ever going to get a chance to promote this pet. Unless you're doing some long, drawn-out stuff. But this mechanic really, really helps you fend off the nest attackers. When they're there because they're trying to ramp up you are gaining a bunch of buffs if you're running a couple of different characters on the squad i mean at least you know cara dune if you happen to run her because she's a popular tank with this team she's taunting every single time that she uses a basic so you have to be careful characters like nest can ramp up and take you out if you don't have the ability to stop her 
but it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful ability to, if you get a chance to promote this pet, all of a sudden you get major critical hit damage and you get defense penetration, which just drives your attack through the roof. Right here, um, you see that special rebel allies gain defense penetration up for two turns. And then the unique Mon Mothma and Rebel Fighter allies have 15% critical damage and plus 30% tenacity. And they get tripled if it's a commander, so she promotes twice. It's pretty neat. So she's great. So who do you use with her? Well, there's a lot of different theories on this. And we'll get into it in a moment, but I just wanted to talk about Mon Mothma's skills in general. And so with that, uh, I took a little bit of footage earlier today and yesterday, and so I just thought I'd uh, get into it a little bit. So we were just going to test out this team here to start with. If you have just Rebel Pilots, this squad actually is one that can stop Nest. And my K2SO is not very good. It's gear 9, whatever, but my Cassian ship, I use Rebels in, in Fleet Arena all the time. This one will stop Nest. And so we're just going to test these out on um, the green relic material board, just to show you. I mean, these are level 85 mobs. And once you get to the end, they're going to be a little bit sweeter. But you can see that bomb there, the... Cassian gets so much potency up from his own self-buff and then the Mon Mothma shared leadership sharing that potency that that healing immunity lands a bunch. And this is how you can stop teams that are constantly healing like a Treya team or a Nest from taking out your squad. When you run Cassian in there, it's quite effective. And Wedge and Biggs do work very, very well together in here, but... You know, we'll get to it in a moment. Wedge kind of takes care of himself to grant himself enough offense. And my Wedge is well attended because he was Relic 3, but then I saw how well he was performing and I pushed him to Relic 4. See that 81,000 damage on a defense down target? It's pretty nice. But you see how the enemies are getting turns here on this last round. And we'll talk about this later. I mean, there's ways to use this team to generate a lot of turn meter, and while these Rebel Pilots are pretty effective on defense for stopping nest tactics, they can be taken out by a lot of other squads pretty easily. However, if they do try to solo nest you, they're going to be in for a world of hurt. So that's one squad that I like to recommend to use if you're kind of, you know, the gear 12-ish range, gear 11, gear 12, maybe a gear 11 Mon Mothma that's three-star or something, a low-gear version. It's pretty solid, and you don't need to worry about wasting resources because you're investing in Rebel Pilots that you're going to need for the Four Fleet GAC. So, good squad. No complaints there, but you can do better in terms of overall damage and defense. Um, if you wanted to go the other route, too, with Rebel Pilots, we should talk about this team, just because you can throw in Bistan and Scarif Rebel Pathfinder here and also be quite successful. You'll actually get a little bit more bonus turn meter and be able to showcase the ability of this team to get a lot more attacks in versus your opponent because of the Bistan Frenzy mechanic. And you're still able to stop Ness because Cassian is still in there. And it's really important. I can't stress enough just how good his bomb is. And yes, he does buff immunity on basic, which is useful to some degree, you know, to always get that buff immunity on your enemies, but the real, real gem with Cassian is just that while he's not a major damage dealer, he drops that bomb and it throws out a ton of debuffs, and that healing immunity just seems to land all the time with his potency up. So you're going to have buff immunity on everything that you hit most of the time as well. And it's just wonderful. Just wonderful. He's great at stopping those, those Malik tactics. Or those, those nest tactics, they can't really solo you out with this squad. But you're also not going to be as offensively mindful. And there's a team in here that I'll get to here in a minute that is just so much bonus turn meter generated that you can ramp up the damage so high that it's really extreme. It's really extreme, and uh, a nest team, you don't need the healing immunity when you can one-shot most nests, and we'll talk about it later. I mean, once you end up maturing the team 
to Max Relic if you're planning on actually taking this th this team all the way to get to Relic 5 on everybody or higher. And Relic 7 on the damage dealer, Wedge. Uh, you can eventually remove Cassian with incredible success and make this team really scary on defense. And so, I guess without any further ado, let's... Uh, Let's get this thing cranked up and uh, I can show you guys my favorite variant. Now, um, Cara Dune is really wonderful in here as your tank. And mine is not ready for prime time yet. She's just gear 8. I just 7 starred her today. Uh, I am going to be gearing her, but I'm going to try to get all of the gear ready to go before I actually use it. So um, for today, I'm going to sub in Scarif Rebel Pathfinder just as a, a stand-in because he's got about 3,600 offense or whatever, 3,500 offense. He's a good stand-in. Kara will be at like 4,700 when she's relicked out pretty well. And we're going to use POW and Hoth Rebel Scout and show you folks how that turn meter engine can really go bananas. Now, if your wedge is junk, this team is still really good with Kara, POW, Hoth Rebel Scout, and Cassian. If your wedge isn't high gear, you're not going to be able to stop the nest, so throw Cassian instead, and it's really good. You can use K2SO and Cassian and POW and Hoth Rebel Scout also, and it'll be very, very, very good. But you know how the other teams had my enemies taking turns? Well, that is not the case with this team because of all the turn meter gain that you get with POW and Hoth Rebel Scout, you will see that we will go through this mission several times and none of the enemies will move. Now in every single case, even Darth Revan, uh, which we'll also see here in a minute just so you can see a damage comparison. I want you to see what happens here when Wedge gets his turn on a defense down opponent. Ouch. 106,000 damage there. That's not a fluke because of the the synergy between POW and defense down, offense up. It is disgusting. And then POW has his Sakala ability that doesn't deal any damage, and so does Mon Mothma. So you have two characters on that side that have zero damage special abilities. What that means is you're dealing 55% damage with Wedge on that turn still. So Wedge becomes ever more powerful on you know two extra turns plus his his own turn that basic hits like an absolute hammer an absolute hammer so let's go in here one more time and you guys can just see it's not a fluke i mean he just deals amazing damage so again they're not going to get a turn that's a 47,000 damage unique critical and you can just watch the turn meter skyrocket. Pow is just going to go over and over. Sakala, look at his turn meter already. He's almost maxed. See that? He just went. We got a couple of turns, maybe one turn there. And Pow is going to move again. And we're on the last board. Watch the enemy turn meter. They barely move. It's Pow's turn again. Sakala, watch Pow's turn meter. Look at it. He's almost ready to go. He did. There you go. Watch Pow's turn meter again. Watch it here when Hoth Rebel Scout moves. Boom, he's maxed again. 55,000 on that. I mean, it's ridiculous. You gain so much turn meter with the squad this way. Now imagine if SRP had 320 speed, like Cara Dune can. I mean, SRP is slow here in this case, but if you get way out in front of some teams, if you go up against some slower DRs, you could probably use this team to kill them. You probably could, because DR can't fear the whole team. He can't target Mon Mothma. He's going to have to hit Kara, and so you'll only get fear on two characters. And he's not going to get a chance to move before the whole team does if your Hoth Rebel Scout starts granting team turn meter and you're modded pretty close to the rest of the team. It can be quite powerful. Um, so anyway, let's uh, take Darth Revan out, just so you guys can see the damage difference. The comparison, my Darth Revan team is my arena team, not my Malik necessarily, but I run Darth Revan, Basil Sean Fallen, Gene Ocean Brood Alpha, Thrawn, and either Watt or Solo, depending on if I'm killing Ray, I use Watt, and Solo I use against uh, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. And I climb to first every night, so these guys have my best mods. Look at the damage, 57,000 on her turn, 59,000. It's 
you know, comparable damage to what Wedge is doing right now on other players' turns. And once Wedge is all buffed up on a defense down target, when they're prepped, which Pow takes care of all by himself, he's got the defense down bomb, he's got the offense up on Sakala that he's always using. I mean, none of these team members are going to hit 100,000 damage, except maybe Malik. That's about it. Malik will drain for it. Or if you get just, you know, a ton of ferocity stacks. I could see it on Basilashan after many shocks are out there. You got 88,000. There's 94,000. That's it. Nobody cleared 100 grand. Wedges, lesser relic than all of them. Every last one of those Sith is, or every last one of the Sith is relic five. And they have my arena mods on them. So it's just, it's a great squad. And I just, I highly urge you guys to not sleep on Wedge on these Rebel Fighters because his synergy with Pow is just insane. And Hoth Rebel Scout is the catalyst. Pow gets so many turns, he keeps going. Eventually, that 40% is going to trigger. You're going to get 25% team turn meter. And you're just going to loop a lot of times with Pow. He's just going to keep going and pushing your team to get turned over and over and over again. And Wedge will just delete people. Now, look at this. I mean, there it is. There's your 40% chance to gain 25% turn meter. That's kind of what, since he's moving every time, eventually, you're going to get that. It's going to trigger at least one in three times. Close to one, one half of the time, but not quite. You know, 40%. So one in three, at least one time going around your team of five. And with the pet out, you will get it twice. It's just how it is. You're going to get about 50% turn meter per revolution. And then Pow gets so many darn turns because of this. 5% turn meter. And his cooldowns are reduced every time somebody uses a basic attack. Well... If he uses Sakala, for instance, you're going to get five basic attacks anyway if Mon Mothma has her pet out. That's 25% turn meter every time he uses it. Every single time. And that's if Hoth Rebel Scout doesn't grant the 25% turn meter to the team. Settle down, Bodie. Sorry, my little buddy is growling at the squirrels. So, basically what that means is He's going to keep going over and over and over again because Sakala by itself, that grants, like, I think 40% turn meter. I mean, we can go take a peek at it here. But, uh, yeah, this skill here, it grants 40% turn meter by itself. So if you get 40% plus 25 more doing the math, that's 65% turn meter every time he uses the skill. And that's if Hoth Rebel Scout doesn't trigger. And if Hoth Rebel Scout does trigger, that's 90% turn meter. So you can imagine he's just ripping right along. And then you have all the stat sharing going on with Mon Mothma's lead. And this guy also has his area effect bomb that drops defense down. And so you end up with a situation where this guy goes, his cooldowns are reduced. I mean, they look like huge cooldowns at 11, right? But they're really not because his Zeta ability on his unique causes cooldowns to be reduced every time a, beta, a basic is used, you see. So what happens is he uses Sakala. He gains a ton of turn meter. There's a bunch of basics that go out. He maybe has to use his bomb the next time he gets his turn, but maybe there's enough turns in between. If Hoth Rebel Scout is triggered after he uses Sakala, basically, then you're going to have to use this bomb the next turn and drop defense down out. So now you have offense up and defense down. And with this basic here, that means he attacks three times because the target has debuffs and he has a buff. Because of this here, this defense down thing, that's where the synergy with Wedge comes in. And so if you look at Wedge, he's got an incredible kit right here, this focus fire, just as basic is what we're always getting out of this team. It's 50% more damage to targets with defense down, just by default. That's before you actually think about the fact that because defense down is applied, you're dealing more damage. It's just across the board, he gets 50% more damage right there. And then they have limited defense. Then you have to think about the fact that this guy gets a ton of offense from his team. 12% and 9 speed for each ally with full health. So the pet counts as an ally, so either he's getting um, five times that 
Or he's getting six times that, depending on whether or not he counts himself as an ally. Some abilities do, some abilities don't. I'm not sure the math on it, but his damage ramps up and scales so dramatically. So if you need one character with relics on this team, give them to him. Besides, he's a requirement for geriatric Luke anyway, the new galactic legend. So you may as well relic three him. I have met relic four, and I'm really tempted just to relic seven him so I can see some of those beautiful 130,000 hits. I mean, I have a three-star gear 11 Mon Mothma, gear 12 everybody else. Really low offense. I mean, you can get POW well over 10,000. Mine is at 3,000. You know, Hoth Rebel Scout can get up there. There's a lot of characters. I know Kara can be, you know, at 4,700, 5,000 if you really are focusing on offense. But with her, you always want speed just to be fast. Mon Mothma also, because the quicker she moves, the quicker the pet promotes. But you can have three attackers that are really, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand damage, and then you're sharing eight percent of all that offense with your team. So it can just really, really hit hard. Anyway, um, let's look at just one more attack here. We're, we're going to do the, the hardest battle here with the most damage reduction that you can get in Cantina. Just to, to showcase what you can do up against some of these bosses, we'll see if we can find somebody with some tougher armor. We'll do a couple more rounds with this squad, but that's the team. That's the one that I would recommend, not with SRP. Throw in Kara there. Like I said, he's just a placeholder. Um, Kara Dune is just going to taunt all the time, and if they try any tactics, one of the better teams to that people like to use against this squad um, is an Emperor-led Empire team. They're a really cheap counter um, because Shock is so great at causing... Uh, the inability for your team to just move over and over and over and over again, and it stops the healing of Mon Mothma. Um, it's a really great tactic most of the time because they gain a bunch of turn meter and you can't, you know. So um, it's really, really a great, great tactic for them to use, but Cara Dune throws a wrench in that because of her AoE stun that affects Empire, <laughs> and she moves so quickly that uh, you can really monkey wrench them really bad, so... Um, she is my preferred tank for this team, and like I said, if, if you have lower gear levels on your squad, there's no shame in using Cassian in here or using K2SO with Cassian. Just, you know, separate them out. Just remember that if you take out POW and HRS, you're going to be less effective in the turn meter train or arena here. So let's look and see if we can get a couple more big hits, and then we'll end the video for today. But, yeah, this team is great. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Um... Like I said, if you're low gear, that uh, Rebel Pilot path just isn't too bad, but I just love the turn meter train, and I'm willing to just put that one relic on Wedge, and all of a sudden, you know, you've got an extremely usable team. There's 56,000 on just a, a four, or that Sakala move, 55,000 again, you know. Wedge just hits like a hammer, and it doesn't take much in order to get him there. Just gear 12 people, and also gear this is a really important thing, too. You're like, oh, well, you know what? I got the gear crunch. We're trying to get Galactic Legends right now. Once you get past gear 8 in both POW and Hoth Rebel Scout, it's a cakewalk. It's stuff that I just had lying around. I mean, you're not talking about a ton of guns or cuffs or, you know, uh, carbs or any nonsense like that. I mean, we're talking about not even black binoculars too badly. There's just a couple. You know, I mean, it's none of the choke point gear that you're really worried about. I was just able to click, 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 click. Oh, look, you're, you're gear 11. <laughs> oh, look, you're gear 12. Just bang, 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 bang. And I'm totally free to play. So, I mean, their, their gear is just really light. Pow's is, gear 8 is kind of brutal. He takes a ton of cuffs and he's got a gun in there. And Scouts is, I think, just a couple of, it's one gun and one cuff, I think. But don't quote me on that. Check uh, SWGOH.GG. But once you got to gear nine, it was smooth sailing. I just cranked them right up there. And take a look at their gear requirements. They're super light. You don't need to worry about the Kairos or anything. Mon Mothma stinks, though. She's brutal. All right. Anyway, let's uh, take a look at this one more time here. That's a nice opening salvo. Emperor just goes down like nothing. See if we can get a nice big hit from Wedge on... Ah, uh, see, we killed the one with defense down, though. That's my bad. Still, though, 65,000 right away, just out the gate, without defense down. 
they just melt players. And again, they're not taking turns. You know, I mean, if you looked at the other teams, they're able to move. So anyway, uh, I really appreciate you all. Thanks a lot for watching. Um, I love this squad and I think that you will too. So I appreciate you and uh, I hope you have a great day and enjoy your Saturday. And until the next video, Danielle, you should uh, also let me know like in your comments, like what you guys have had success with or if there's any voodoo magic with that Biggs and Lando and SRP and uh, uh, Hoth Rebel Scout team that has the most defends on SWGOH.GG. I just think that's absolutely ridiculous because I just I can't see how it could ever outperform this team if you have a Relic 7 wedge and just average players. I mean, imagine if this squad was all Relic 7. Just imagine how much offense sharing. Would Wedge be hitting for 150 grand right now? Oh, mods too. I suppose I should talk about that before I let you guys go. I know I, it's getting to be kind of a long video, but um, the way that I have my, my Rebel Fighter set up, Mon Mothma just has as fast as I can make her. Um, I didn't really do anything with her. Uh, I think I have an extra health set on her for her her other set and just i mean she's stuck it with weak mods right and then wedge i just i have crit damage and crit chance on him for right now but the strongest modding for him is going to be a very powerful offense set with a crit damage triangle i just this set was so close in damage and i didn't want to take my very best offense set off my b1 battle droid so i made a compromise because this set would be junk on b1 and it's within like two or three thousand top damage after defense down and offense up than my top set. So I just left it. So just offense and a ton of offense again and crit damage. And we got some potency on that one too, which is pretty nice. But just going for, for offense, there's nothing special about these mods. They're not great. But there's secondary mods that work. And there are pilot mods over there on the right. And so, and they happen to be, you know, the right ones. They're offense, square offense, plus. And so I kept them. I don't have any offense arrows on here. You could go that route if you wanted to. As long as your care is quick, you might try it out. I don't know how well it works. I just have speed arrows on everyone. And then I just put offense mods with offense on these folks. That's all I did. Just to try to, to utilize Mon Mothma's leadership. They're not fast. I mean, I have a lot better mods, but this team really doesn't need too many great mods. It just needs to be able to get off to the races, and then the turn meter hits. I mean, there's there's nothing special here. That one's really slow, really slow, but it had 113, so I threw it on them. I mean, these are not good mods. They're not. But they're good enough mods in order to get the job done. I've had several holds in GAC with my Mon Mothma squad, and it's just been very, very beneficial for me. There's my Kara. We're working on her. She'll get there eventually, and when she does, it's going to be a good day for me. So let's see here. We've looked at that. Yeah, all my Scare for Rebel Pathfinder. You saw him before, but he's just got a speed set. It's okay. It's nothing special. But he shared, oh, 2,800 offense with the rest of the team, I guess. Nothing major. And so... Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Mon Mothma isn't special either. I mean, this is not a great team, but you saw the massive numbers I was able to pull out a wedge with it. So just imagine if this team was all Relic 7. And you take them in there, I bet you could hit 150 grand on that mission. And maybe, you know, a good solid 100 grand on pretty much any enemy and 120 grand on SE in the arena at Relic 7. I mean... It's crazy, especially, I mean, if that pet ever got a chance to promote on him, you'd never get a chance to on a Sith Empire team because they're just not going to be around long enough or they're going to kill you uh, before you ever get there. But you think about a nest or something, once the pet promotes, I wish that I could show it to you folks. But I haven't been able to get that team to get that pet promoted on any mission that I can attack. They always kill it off beforehand. And that's when I'm not even trying to deal damage. I don't throw it offense up. They just gain so much turn meter that I've never been able to see that pet promote ever on anything. And I, they're not high enough star to use it 
on uh, light side territory battles. So I can't do it. It's really funny, but rest assured, once that pet promotes, if Nest is still on the board, he's going to be in big trouble because Wedge is going to start dropping hammers. You get 15% more crit damage on on uh, 100,000. It's an extra 15 grand, right? I mean, it's pretty easy to <laughs> to deduce. It's it's insane. It's insane. So, um, well, okay, let's let's not say that. I mean, if it's a hundred thousand after the first modifier, I mean, at worst, you're gonna end up with you know eight to nine thousand extra damage if you take defense into consideration. But there's defense penetration on top of it, right? So, I mean, because the Mon Mothma ability here, when the pet uses his skill. Right there, the special rebel morale, defense penetration up for two turns. So who knows how hard you're hitting, but uh, I know my nest wouldn't survive, and Relic 7 nest has... Oh, let's see here. Let's go pop over to Deacon Frost. I know he has one because he uses it with his ray before he got his second GL. Really nice fella in my shard. Let's just see here. How much damage do we need to do to one-shot this fool? Not much. Not much. Yeah, if you hit for 130 grand, he's dead. <laughs> or she's dead, excuse me, since Nest is female. You don't need that much damage. So, you're, I mean, 120,000 or so is all you need to knock her just from zero to hero. And for sure, you're going to chip damage, right? I mean, worst-case scenario... Let's say you hit for a hundred grand. You just chipped away twenty thousand health. She's gonna have to counter and come back and, and take you out that way. It'd be the only way. So and if Cassian's in there, it doesn't matter, right? Because healing immunity hopefully will land and that's that. But this one you'd have a hard time landing it necessarily, but with that potency up and a decent potency cross on Cassian, I bet it'd still land. You take him out. There's plenty of uh, evidence on SWTOH.gg that shows that Nest and Kira together just get mopped up by Mon Mothma teams with Cassian in it. So anyway, that's the video for today. I know I was going to end it a little bit earlier, so I'm just going to shut up. Happy Saturday, and uh, thanks a lot, guys and gals. I appreciate you all. Uh, if you have any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. And until the next video, Denny out.